I'm Rob Port from SayAnythingBlog.com. On November, on the November ballot, there was a, a measure uh, regarding animal uh, cruelty laws, uh, some changes to the laws uh, to expand uh, their impact on on animals. Uh, that measure was rejected, but the group behind it is now asking the legislature because uh, their feeling is that during the debate, voters rejected it because they expected something uh, to happen at the legislature. I have on with me Karen Thunshell to talk about that and, and what their expectations are from the legislature. Uh, Karen, first of all, wh why do you feel like the uh, your ballot measure was rejected on in uh, on election day? Well, I, I think that um, the voters were, just like you said, promised a more all-inclusive bill or, you know, solution. And to where we tried to limit ours, that we were very considerate of our egg community. And um, the promise of an all-inclusive bill, that we have something better and we'll, we will uh, include all animals, I, I think that was the big... Um, the big deal. I think that's uh, so voters had a safe place to go. They didn't necessarily have to, you know, just because you voted no for Measure 5 didn't mean that you didn't want stronger animal cruelty laws. So, um, you know, it wasn't an either or. We had a, we had options. So, and we've always supported um, the legislative efforts and, and we will continue to do so. And, and I really applaud them for um, uh, introducing or getting this bill uh, hopefully introduced soon okay uh, now what what uh, you know what provisions I mean what what are you expecting to be different from you know what was on the ballot which is what voters rejected what uh, what changes are you expecting to be made for legislation that would be introduced I mean because obviously you know like like you said and, and I think we're describing what our thoughts are on on why voters rejected the ballot measure what changes are you expecting to happen? Or what different, you know, additions to the law or subtractions to the law are you expecting to happen, uh, you know, for, for a bill introduced at the legislature that's going to make the representatives of the people want to make that law? Well, I think that the that this bill that they're introduced, the latest version that I have read, which was, was on their website, um, which, you know, you never know what's going to be introduced, but I, I believe that that's what was, is going to be introduced. Um, it's an all-inclusive bill, and it's uh, they're re rewriting the Century Code. So we have um, changes in a lot of things, and anything as far as um, neglect, um, you know, starvation, things that people were concerned that weren't included in ours should be included in this. And um, the big, the big one is is that it's all animals. I think they have provisions in there for. Um, you know, uh, seizure cases to where animals have to be removed from the home, and so it's not just a statute. It's you know, there, it's a it's a much different proposal, and it's just more involved. So um, I will also be you know eager to see if uh, what was on their website is what's being introduced, which which I just I hope that's what happens. As far as you're concerned, as far as your group is concerned, what would be the ideal outcome from the legislature in terms of law? Um, that this that the bill that they have that they had um, on their website that that just goes right through, no problems and just um, uh, I am praying that it just uh, goes through as written and isn't you know ripped apart into into nothing. So um, we just urge everybody to support their legislatures uh, to make sure that we. We urge them that this is something that is needed, and uh, call call them, invite them, ask them out for coffee, whatever needs to be done. I mean, the the people who voted, um, all of the people that are interested in animal cruelty reform, and uh, we're all in it for the same reason. So even if you voted no on Measure Five, it doesn't mean you're not for it. Um, so their coalition or and our coalition, we're, we're all trying to make this this state a better place for animals one one thing that i heard because I, I i think your contention is is that one reason why the ballot measure failed is because it didn't go far enough it wasn't all inclusive enough one thing that i heard from from a lot of people who talked to me about this about how they made up their mind on how they voted 
was that they didn't really see that there was a problem, that they were starting, you know, they, they wanted to vote. They to Sort of to paraphrase what I heard, they like to see that there's a problem that a law is going to solve before they vote in favor or support that law. And a lot of them just weren't seeing that North Dakota has, has a problem with animal cruelty that necessitates the expansion of this law. What would be your response to that? Um, well, my being in the animal care field, um, I think that um, every professional that's in this field would, would really disagree with that statement. Um, if you're in the veterinary profession, if you're in the sheltering rescue, um, there isn't um, any of those individuals that I've talked to that, that don't feel that there is a need for reform. So if you're, if you're not in that on a daily basis or um, really involved in, in animal issues, um, you might not hear about it all the time, but it is definitely um, something that is needed in our state on many levels. And when you talk about extreme cruelty, like a, like Measure 5 was talking about, um, torture basically, um, you don't always hear about those. A lot of those animals don't make it out of those situations. So, um, and a lot of domestic violence cases and things like that, those aren't reported. That's not something you plaster all over the news when somebody beats up their wife or girlfriend or whatever and kills the dog. I mean, that's just not something that is um, advertised, so to speak, but it, it's definitely out there. So it's, um, it's just not a true statement. There's definitely need for reform. Do you have do you have statistics on? I mean, obviously, I guess I guess your point is is that a lot of these things aren't being reported. But I mean, do we have any sort of statistics for um, you know incidents that are being reported that that we could point to as, as data to, to show that this is a problem? I you know, and I'm I don't personally have anything like that, um, and it would definitely be something we could you know I could try and find, but um, I don't have. I would maybe just say that or might have some statistics on it. And that's one of the things last year in the legislature when when um, a study was asked just to study it. So we maybe would have more information on that through through domestic violence agen agencies and, and things, but we, we don't. So um, the study would have been helpful, but um, why uh, these are, these we're not asking for, you know, gold. These, these reforms are needed, and, and they're um, they're just standard in many other states. So it's uh, it's just something that North Dakota really needs to step up and uh, get something passed to kind of put us in line with um, you know other states and what's happening. But uh, you know our state is changing too, so we have uh, some new influx, and um, we need to just keep up with things. Uh, final question: What would your plans be if we get through this legislative session, uh, come April or May, and the legislature didn't do anything, didn't pass anything? Um, would your group then look at another ballot measure? Yeah, absolutely. Um, North Dakota to stop animal cruelty uh, is is here to stay, and um, there's a lot of great great organizations and people involved and. And um, if we can't get it done in the legislature, then we'll, um, it, it will send a strong message to the people. Um, basically, uh, they, they didn't say what they were going to do, so that we'll try, we'll try it again in 2014. All right, Karen, thank you very much for your time. Thank you.